I'll be speaking on my experiences on hoops and slims canal based glaucoma surgeries. So, uh, I do three kinds of surgeries in my setup: canaloplasty for open angle glaucoma, 360 degree trabeculotomy, both uh, sin uh, ab interno and ab externo for sinical narrow angle glaucoma, and ab interno trabeculectomy, which I call trap for mild to moderate angle uh, open angle glaucoma. And I'll be speaking on complications which can happen in these. So first we'll take up canaloplasty. Canaloplasty is not a very difficult surgery. It's a simple surgery. Basic premise is you uh, open up the Schlem's canal, put a suture inside, tie up the suture tightly using a catheter, which helps you guide through the canal. The basic problem which people have while doing the surgery is cannulation of the canal. So this is a simple uh, surgery just to show how to cannulate the canal and where all you can go wrong. So this was a simple surgery. I everything was done. I put the catheter in the canal to cannulate it. Now what happened was the catheter got struck somewhere at six o'clock. So I thought, okay, if it got struck at six o'clock, we'll go from the other side. Now this happens sometimes because sometimes what happens is that the Schlem's canal develops kinks inside it. So if you go from the other side, the catheter sometimes is able to navigate those kinks and come out. But no, this was not happening in this case. Again, no problem. So I thought, okay, let's try the other side again. Went in through this side again. Went in through the other side. I tried my best so that to make it come out, it was not coming out. It was not passing through the entire trabecular tissue. So then I realized the problem. The problem here is that in these eyes, if the eyeball goes too soft, the Schlem's canal collapses on itself. And once the canal collapses on itself, it develops kinks. So what I did was I stopped there, used the two cc syringe with BSS, in, uh, introduced the BSS into the anterior chamber to increase the IOP. Now, when you increase the IOP, the kinks in the canal dissolve because the pressure increases and the catheter is able to pass through. So, in any canal-based surgery, when you are trying to cannulate, increase the IOP is very important. If you are doing it under low IOP, the canal will not. It, it will be difficult to cannulate the canal, whether using a catheter or a suture, because the can, canal will develop kinks in the soft lobe and the catheter will get struck, which mm -hmm. is similar to what you see when you are putting a CTR in a floppy. Uh, bag. If the bag is floppy, the CTR will not pass through. Second procedure which I do normally is trabeculotomies, either ab interno or ab externo. This is also a simple procedure. Same thing. You have to cannulate the canal either using a suture or a catheter. But difference is that it, when you pull the sutures or catheter together, they cheese by through the canal and create a fistula between the Schlem's canal and the anterior chamber, thus helping in egress of the IOP. So this was a case where I had a very typical complication, which is not usually seen. So everything was going very well. I passed the catheter through, and when I pulled the two ends of the catheter, I just pulled it. I had a DM detachment. You see the catheter; it is passing anterior to the desmic membrane rather than passing below the DM. So here I did not realize. I had a suspicion something went wrong, but I didn't realize it was coming anterior to the DM and just pulled it through. Second problem, major. I compounded the problem. How I made a side port in the cornea. I thought maybe this DM was not detached. Visual thinking. Made a side port and injected viscoelastic. And as I inject viscoelastic, you'll see it going anterior to the desmic membrane. So next, I wanted to again check whether DM is detached. So I went in using a saline on a two cc to see if any visco will come out. Nothing was coming out. It was all anterior to the DM. Again, I. Thought okay, let's try with the IA cannula again. You see these folds; the DM is detached throughout now. So I had a big problem in my hand, but then I just left everything, thought for two seconds, and then I realized okay, this is not a big problem. You can handle. So I made a side port through the scleral spur. This is important. When you go through the scleral spur, you are beyond the desmic membrane, and then insert a cannula and inject it here. So this helped the DM to come out. Then I thought okay, like in dissect. Uh, you make venting ports, so I made a venting port here. I had to remove the uh, speculum out. This venting port will go up to the desmic membrane. The speculum has to be taken out when you are doing this, otherwise the desmic membrane will blow out. So you make a venting port and go deep as far as the desmic, and then I use Vexel sponges and massage of the cornea. So this was Vexel sponge to as uh, soak it out and massage of the cornea gently through the same venting port, and this helped take out of whatever visco had gone inside. I did I dare not put any cannula to aspirate from this port, so I just used this and a venting uh, massage. 
so it took me 15 20 minutes but at the end of the surgery the air bubble had come out fully completely filling the anterior chamber which told me that yes this dm is attached now i don't need to bother so close the case left it there came again after 3 months to finish the surgery so i showed this because a lot of people are now doing these catheter based procedures or suture based procedures and this can happen to anyone so one thing to you need to keep in mind is whenever you are doing a trabeculotomy the globe has to be firm if you try to do this in a soft globe there's a very high chance either you will have a dm detachment or the suture or catheter might go behind the iris to cause a ciliary body detachment also but even if you have a dm detachment just stop everything make a side port important not to go through the cornea go through the scleral spur just above the iris insert a candle on the syringe be sure before injecting air that you are above the dm or leave it do an anterior segment oct next day and then decide what to do about this there's another thing uh, people are doing a lot of gad these days a lot of times they, because most people don't have access to a catheter they have sutures which they are using 50 proline a lot of these uh, sutures i expect get struck sometimes so important thing is to anticipate why it is getting struck now this is a case with a previous card bleb i know i'm passing a catheter here that this is not probably going to get struck somewhere here because this bleb is scarred anyways so i know this is going to get uh, struck and it got did get struck so what i did was made a small side port from here went in through a micro forceps open jaws just went in into the angle grasp the catheter and then pull it out so why i'm showing this is that if you're doing a gat procedure with a suture and your suture is not able to pass 360 degrees you feel it is struck somewhere use a gonio lens check where the anterior part of the suture or tip of the suture is lying make a side port opposite to that tip go with a micro forceps hold it and then you can complete the procedure without uh, abandoning it per se the last technique which i'm going to show or the complication of it is trabecular peeling technique of ab interno trabeculectomy called the strap so basically you use the ab interno method to completely peel off the trabecular mesh from inside the cornea you can peel it either 360 degrees or 120 whatever your preference is depending on the case so this is a case where already i had started the peeling so you see this flap here this is the this is the flap of trabecular mesh which has been peeled to some extent I'm going with the regular capsular excess forceps through the main port because this was a combined procedure. The only thing that can go wrong in this procedure is that if you're not careful about the iris, then you can do damage to the iris, and that is what happened here. That's what I'm showing. So I was peeling it off, and I forgot that the AC was shallowing. And if you see here, now uh, I just caught the iris, and I got a circumferential tear here in the iris. thankfully i realized this in time that the iris was also tearing off used the forceps to pull to give counter traction and then started pulling the trabecular mesh hook again so uh, i expect people to be doing this procedure also in a few uh, coming years so if you are going to follow and try to do this then please be aware that you will probably not do much of a damage only thing is be aware that the iris can be torn from the root or circumferentially this was circumferentially torn i didn't need to do any repairs after the end of the case that seemed to be pretty good enough so i just left it there post op also patient did good so for trap technique keep a watch over the anterior chamber depth and be wary of catching the iris when using the forceps so from my end this is all i wanted to say about it so thanks for patience great work